Hello, all the Studio One users and subscribers of the Obedia YouTube page and any new members now watching this video. We are going to look at the last basic element of my tie in any synthesizer that you might use. This is the amplification section, also long for amp. So we covered the oscillator, we've covered the filter, now we're going to cover the amplifier. So the amplifier stage in any synthesizer is simply the stage where we're able to increase the level voltage gain, however you want to put it, of your synthesized sound. There's a lot more that goes with it, and most commonly you will see or hear something called an envelope or an envelope generator. If you ever heard of the term ADSR and you are not sure what's referring to, this is going to open your world a little bit. At the amplification section, we have something called the master volume, and normally an envelope generator called ADSR. Now, the ADSR may exist in other places as well. For example, the filter section may have its own ADSR, but most commonly, you will always find one for the amplification stage. It is this envelope generator that is going to control how the sound actually propagates over time. Is it going to ride slow? Is it going to hit you like a bell? Is it going to sound wobbly? This is what the ADSR is going to control, how the sound is going to move over time. Without this, you will always have a synthesized sound that performs with the same exact behavior. Now, I have opened my tie and another MIDI chord progression by Cymatics. For this demonstration, I'm going to show you the ADSR in typical synthesis making a pad sound. Now, ADSR, the A stands for attack, the D stands for decay, the S is for sustain, and the R is for release. Now in my tie, you have all four. Some synthesizers may have more, others may have less or none at all. So in my tie, when we change the attack, we are controlling how long it takes for our synthesizer to reach a maximum amplitude. That amplitude is set by your master volume. So if we look at our master volume, it's set to negative six dB. So our attack knob is going to control how long it takes to reach a negative 6 dB. So as I move this knob, you can see how the line is becoming sloped. That's going to control how long it takes for this sound to rise to get to a negative 6 dB. In the middle here, you will see a transparent circle. That's controlling the curve or the bend. Now, our rise doesn't have to be linear. So as you can hear, when I move that knob, it's changing how the synthesizer is attacking that negative 6 dB level, going from infinity to a negative 6 dB. When it reaches the very top of its level, you have what's called the decay. Now the decay can sometimes be slightly confusing. Your textbook definition of decay is the time that it takes for your synthesizer to reach its negative infinity value. When you press the keys and create a sound and you're waiting for something to decay, just like on a piano, the piano will automatically fade out. If you hold the sustain pedal, however, it is going to continue at a certain level. Without that sustain, it will fade out. This is what your decay controls. The decay controls how long it takes for your sound to fade out back to a negative infinity. So with what I have set, 
I'm going to have this sound have a short attack. And then I'm going to steadily increase the decay so you can see how it's going to increase the time for it to fade out back to its negative infinity mark. So that should give you a good idea of how decay works. Your attack rises your level to that maximum volume and gets the sound to the amplification that it needs to be, and then decay let it falls until it's gone away completely. Now the interesting part, I brought up the sustain pedal on a piano. That sustain in the piano does exactly what it will do in a synthesizer. When you have sustain set, if you constantly hold the keys and never let up on the keys, your sustain will pick a level that the sound will continuously play until you let go of the keys. So in this example, you can hear that the sound is reaching its maximum value with the slightly short attack and it's gonna go pow. But then the decay is short and the sustain level is quiet. So it's gonna reach that sustain level really fast and then it's gonna hold there because I have all of these notes being played legato and they're being held until the next chord comes in. So it's gonna go pow and then just reside very small. Now we're holding this note forever. The sustain will sustain this note forever. But then we need something to happen when we let go. If we decide to just let go when we lift up on a sustain, the note would just cut out at that point. But we may not want it to cut out as is described on this graph. There's this hard L-shaped cutoff, it's a cliff. And if somebody rode their bike down this cliff, they would just essentially fall off. What we need to do is increase something called the release. The release is this progressive time that it takes for the sound to fade out after the decay. Because when you're holding that note on that sustain, it is now being held at that level. Now, in order for us to hear this release, we're gonna have to shorten these notes. In doing so, the sustain will only last through the lifetime of that note being triggered, and then the dead space is the time that the release has for it to fade out until the next note is played. and stop. As you see, that took almost seven seconds for it to come to a close. Now, if we shorten this release all the way back and create that dead end again, this is what we get.
it just cuts off. So that is ADSR. And you might see this in other plugins and other synthesizers, but ADSR works the same. For the rest of the features you might find on a synthesizer, I'll be talking about those more in depth for each feature and best ways to apply them. So this was basically your overview on how to use a synthesizer and getting started with my tie. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.